Well, a new story came out this past week talking about how 70% of physicians in China are still prescribing antibiotics for the common cold, which is interesting because they're really not supposed to be doing that because, you know, we are coming to the end of what they call the antibiotic era, right? Yeah. I mean, the antibiotics are no longer working. Yeah, the golden era, we used to call it because really when you think of it, antibiotics were uh, probably the greatest discovery of the 19th century when you looked at it, right? And they're and, becoming the curse of this century. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So here a story comes out talking about how uh, they're being overprescribed, and as a result of that, we're starting to see bugs that essentially there are no antibiotics for. I mean, think of the implications of if we enter a new age where antibiotics simply don't work anymore because the types of bugs that are coming out. Yeah. You get simple cuts that you get uh, flesh-eating diseases now with a staph type of infections that are really resistant. These bugs have, have built the resistance to, to antibiotics. And so you look at C. difficile, which, you know, the most dangerous place you can ever go to in, yeah. in, the, in the world is a hospital. Because if you pick up a C. difficile, it is difficile. That's, oh, a, French, yeah. that, that's a French word that means difficult oh, and yeah. it's not I mean, it's, easy it's to It's appropriately treat. named, right? Uh, I mean, how many just... people they're saying now, and even liver toxicity, it's amazing. The number one cause of liver, acute liver toxicity is the use of antibiotics in our society. It's crazy today. So you have, I mean, you know, antibiotics have been abused for a long period of time. I mean, there was a time, and unfortunately, even to this day still, uh, they were prescribed for every ear infection. They were prescribed for every sore throat, regardless if it was viral or not, right? Now, I think they're supposed to test to see whether or not it's a virus before they even yeah. can uh, administer. But I mean, you know, People are busy, they go in there, they, they write these scripts for antibiotics. So now let's bring this back a little bit more, uh, you know, bring it back a little bit more practical, more personal. As a result of the years of antibiotic use, right? I mean, a lot of people grew up, they were antibiotics for years because of acne, right? Yeah. I mean, they were on antibiotics for acne yeah. or years of antibiotic use. Uh, we are seeing a condition in the clinic and we, we test for it on our biomarker testing. Uh, what are we seeing? Well, we see something that is, uh, you know, some say can even be deadly, and that is candida. And candida comes... Well, what is, I, I mean, what, what is candida? Well, candida is a, is a, it's a growth. It's, a, it's, a, it's an organism. It's a fungus, right? Like people would under... Yeast. Um, a little bit of that in your gut is actually normal. Your body can use it. It can help digestion. But if you get an overgrowth, the second that you take an antibiotic, one five-day antibiotic treatment kills all your friendly bacteria in your body. So what happens? Now you have, uh, you have a, a, what we call dysbiosis, a big word, but it means you got more bad guys than you have good guys. And then what happens? You get an overgrowth of that yeast or fungus. Yeah, the bad Candida. bacteria tends to grow easier. It tends to grow yeah. faster. It's more aggressive. Yeah. So if you wipe the bacteria clean, the bad stuff grows at a lot quicker and it just, it really takes over. Yeah. So and I don't know, I, 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 in my opinion, again, just because, you know, I'm always looking at blood. I'm always looking at these biomarkers that we do. I have never seen a case of an autoimmune disorder that doesn't have dysbiosis some kind of digestive component to yeah it. absolutely always 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 and you know people with bad skin eczema psoriasis um you name the yeah disorder. i was going to ask you what are some of the common symptoms that somebody with candida would have when they come in what do they present with well a couple of things are usually fatigue again you know it's a common denominator in a lot of disorders that are starting digestive issues bloating uh real cravings for sugar I mean, they'll go by Laura Secords and want to do a swan dive because they, they need that sugar, that quick fix. Uh, they're very lethargic. They don't feel good. Um, you know, it's skin eruptions. They'll usually, you know, and even inflammatory conditions. Yeah, a lot uh, of joint pain, muscle pain. Yeah. And brain fog. Yeah, like a lot, that's a lot, a lot of, of memory Because candida issues. goes everywhere. Yes. Right? Gets into the lung tissue oftentimes. Well, Sinuses. I mean, we real know. chronic sinusitis. Probiotics. They seal that blood-brain barrier. We know that, right? So yeah. you eliminate that, and it's not doing its job. You're going to get brain issues as well. Yeah. So all right. So we, I mean, biomarker testing. We check for we check for candida. Yeah. What do you recommend for somebody that does have candida? I know there are a lot of diets out there, right? A lot of yeah. these candida diets, yeah. and they're tough to do. Yeah. I mean, they well, are, not, not only that, they don't even work. 
Uh, the reason is, is because um, candida diets, people can barely do them. And look, at, here's the first thing. I don't care what you do in a diet. If you don't take a broad spectrum probiotic, you're never going to get rid of candida. It's an impossibility. So that's the first thing, probiotics. And we developed a candida formula, as you know, yeah. uh, that's, that you can take. You take it over a period of time. And that, along with the probiotic, oil of oregano. But listen, in diet, you've got to use, uh, you've got to go very low carb. You've got to read your labels, keep the carbs out of your diet as much as possible, and especially your sugars. If there's any sugar added, you know, because I have a lot of women, they start their day with yogurt. And then I said, well, read the label. Yeah, is so it vanilla yogurt yeah. or is it plain? Oh, no, vanilla, because I can't stand the yeah, plain. So, like well, you're yogurt. feeding that yeast. Yeah. You know, it's the sugars are added. You know, we, we eat 150 pounds of sugar Wait, a year. No wonder somebody can eat low carb. They can eat less than 50 grams of carb and still get too much sugar. People are always amazed when you hear that. But if you're getting 50 grams of carb and 40 of that is sugar, I mean, that's that's too much, yeah. right? And, so, you, and you know what? You can have a limited amount of fruit and, and not feed candida. Limited. And I like berries, you know, because they're low yeah, in low sugar. sugar yeah. And, you know, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't eat a banana or things like that, even though... Uh, the other thing, too, that I like is uh, prebiotics because you want to feed your friendly bacteria. These are uh, fructooligosaccharides, big word, but just they're, they are sugars that are found usually in, in fruit. Um, you know, maybe a little touch of maple syrup, but not much, a little bit. A little bit of honey, but non-pasteurized honey. Locally grown is even better. Put it in. Uh, in your in in a in a plain yogurt, and you know what? It feeds your friendly bacteria. And then the more friendly you have, the more you're going to beat that candida down, clear up the leaky gut, and you get better. Well, if you have any more uh, questions on this, you can reach us. You know, just visit our website at martinclinic.com, or you can email us, and we'll be glad to answer your questions. Thanks for watching.